It's a funny time of year at the moment because we're just coming to the middle of spring, end of spring, and we're going to be going into summer soon, which means that the time that we can actually have complete darkness outside is getting shorter and shorter and shorter. And it's, um, it's frustrating because you can't do any imaging. So I wanted to look at the different types of light that we get throughout the year, but at different times, and they've all got different names. So um, there's three types of twilight. There's civil twilight, there's nautical twilight, and then there's astronomical twilight. And ideally, as somebody who wants to take photos of the night, we want to have astronomical twilight going into astronomical night when it's completely dark. So let's have a look at the different types and different times that you get this type of twilight. So we start off when we've got, we've got the planet Earth here, going around there, and all the way up there. And if we imagine the horizon, and as we take the sun, so the sun's going down, I'm just going to draw our lovely sun going here. So the sun is beginning to set, going down there. And if we imagine a line which is a different degree, so if I take the first one here, going down to there, and then we measure that angle there, and we put it at six degrees. The next one here, I'm going to do another one. This one here, from here down to there, is going to be at 12 degrees. And then the final one that we've got here, this one is measured all the way down to there. And that one is 18 degrees. Now, so if this is our horizon going across, so I'm going to put H for horizon there. Civil twilight is when the sun is six degrees below the horizon. So the sun would be here. And the idea is that when you're above the horizon, the refracted light that you see across the horizon is when the sun is six degrees below. And the same goes for nautical twilight. So basically when the sun is at 12 degrees, it's here. And the refracted light that we see when we're stood above the horizon is where the sun is 12 degrees below the horizon. And then we have astronomical twilight. And that is when the sun has dropped 18 degrees below the horizon, as we can see here. Now these types of twilight are all defined because of the quality of the light that you get when the sun is in these different positions going below the horizon. So for example, civil twilight is that time when you can still see what you're doing and uh, the street lamps aren't quite on. Um, so in a town or city, the lights were just beginning to come on and um, that's roughly when the sun is about six degrees below the horizon. Now nautical twilight was interesting because it's a little bit lower than civil twilight at 12 degrees, um, but it's low enough for the, some key stars to be able to be seen. And it's called nautical because those stars are the core stars which sailors traditionally would have used to navigate by. Now astronomical twilight is interesting because again for astronomers this is when they were able to see key star constellations but you couldn't quite see um, some really interesting deep sky objects so you wouldn't be able to see um, any nebulae or any um, galaxies in the sky at all. Um, so it's that funny time when you can see the stars, but you can't see deep sky objects. Now in astronomy, we want to be in darkness. Um, and 
true astronomical darkness, which is the period of time when astronomical twilight finishes, we're then into astronomical darkness. And that's the best time when we can start imaging. I found an amazing app from the designers of Astrophotography Tool, which actually shows you the time at which you get into astronomical darkness. And it also shows you when astronomical twilight ends and then how long you've got for astronomical darkness. And then when you have astronomical dawn starting, it shows you what time you can finish imaging because obviously it's beginning to get light. Here we have the app from Astrophotography Tool. It's called APTDC. So we'll click on there. So what we have here is today's date and it shows you the amount of time that you're actually going to have where you're in astronomical darkness, where you can actually start imaging and make good use of the time. And it shows you quite clearly that the astronomical darkness time we have is two hours and 50 minutes. So it's just shy of three hours of true darkness that we're going to have. The other interesting things here, it also shows you the astronomical twilight end time. So um, we've got here astronomical twilight is going to end at 11.33. And then we've got astronomical um, twilight starting at 2.23 in the morning. So that's the window there when we've got time to image. So really, if we were to um, start imaging tonight, what we'd have to do is get everything set up, then calibrate our equipment and try and start imaging as near as half past 11 until 2.30 in the morning. And then it would become really difficult. The quality of the light would deteriorate because it would be it, dawn would be happening, um, which is quite tricky. The other great thing about this particular app is you can go forwards in time. So if I now scroll through a few days, here we go. So if I now go to next week, we can actually see that we don't have any true darkness at all. So there isn't any astronomical darkness at all. So astronomical twilight ends at the same time, roughly, that dawn begins. So there is absolutely no true darkness. And that's just because we're going into the summer months now. And it becomes really difficult to be able to do any imaging at all. One really nice thing about this as well is you can then start using this to find out when you can see over the next few months there's literally going to be no true darkness because we're going to be basically in twilight during the night for most of the night. But one nice thing is as we go through time, you then begin to see that the hours will start to increase. And straight away, the hours are increasing increase those quite a lot. So we've now got six hours there. So it's a really useful little tool on here and um, I strongly recommend uh, downloading it. It is free um, and if you can, uh, you can donate to Astrophotography Tool in order, if you use, to use this app, in order to support its development. Um, I think it's brilliant. It's so useful and it shows you exactly where you are and you can nip through the months. So I'm now going to go back where we were. Although it's a really tricky time of year when the night's dead short and we can't actually do that much deep sky imaging, there are some really cool things coming up over the next few weeks which we can do. And that is of course lunar imaging. We can image the moon. Um, the moon is going to be up and it's a really good time of year to start looking at taking some lunar images. Um, in particular, trying to get lots of detail from the surface of the moon. And the other thing, which is one of my personal favorites, um, very soon, Saturn and Jupiter begin to rise in the south and they are brilliant to image, they're such fun. And even though we won't have true darkness, you can actually image both Saturn and Jupiter in twilight because they're part of our solar system. It doesn't require the skies to be completely dark. So that's something to really look forward to. And as the year progresses, they will get earlier and earlier in the evening. So eventually, sort of come September, October time, you'll actually be able to see them in the sky in the early evening. 
hopefully, and you'll be able to image them as well. But if you want to image them at the moment, you have to get up quite early at sort of half past two, three in the morning when dawn is just breaking. And even though it'll be quite bright, you'll still be able to see them in the sky. And it is possible to image them. One thing I'd really like to do this year is try and create an animation of Jupiter because Jupiter rotates so quickly. So I want to try and take a series of videos, maybe over an hour period, and then try and cut them together so that you can actually see the rotation of the planet Jupiter. I hope you found this useful. Thanks very much for watching and take care and stay safe everybody. Like and subscribe if you can, it's much appreciated. And I'll see you in the next one. Take care.